So in today's video, we're going to answer some of your concerns that you've sent us through uh, We Are Chalmers Instagram video. And these answers are a reflection of our personal experiences. But also for more official information, we're going to include in the caption some links from Chalmers. Yes, as long as you can speak English, I think you're fine in Sweden. Yeah, I don't think I've met a Swede that doesn't speak fairly well English, like good level. Yeah, and Sweden is pretty multicultural, so you're not expected to speak Swedish here. Yeah, I mean, I saw in a coffee shop that there are some students who work there and they have no level, let's say, of Swedish and they still manage to get part-time jobs. However, Swedish classes are included in the tuition fee and that's a good way to get to know the culture better. Yeah, that's true. There are a couple of dorms affiliated with Chalmers and all fee-paying students from outside the EU are guaranteed housing from either Chalmers Studentbostäder or SGS. As for the different kinds of accommodations in dorms, we have a series of reels on our Instagram page in addition to previous lives where we show you around. Otherwise, there are several landlords who offer rooms for rent for students. In any case, you won't be on the streets. I hope so. So, managing your expenses, and especially if it's your first time living abroad, because that's different from traveling abroad, can be a bit difficult. But I have two tips that I can give to people. So the first one would be actually tracking your expenses. So write down everything that you spend, no matter how small or big it is, and then you can kind of see where the most important uh, expenses are, and then you can keep money for that. And these will be non-negotiables, for example, like your rent. And the other advice that I have is to meal prep. And this is really underrated because first you will save time and next you will save money and also you wouldn't waste so much food. As for how much we pay for rent, I think the maximum you would pay is around 5,600 Swedish krones and that would be the maximum amount and usually including all expenses. As for groceries, you could get away with 3,000 uh, Swedish krones, that's around 300 euros, maybe less if you're better than me. <laughs> and yeah, but also it, did, it really differs from one person uh, to another. And we have an Instagram TV video that we've done before discussing in detail the student life expenses. Well, I wouldn't be too worried if I were you. Okay, because you know, like the general idea that people have about Swedes is that, okay, you're nice and everything, but it's hard to get into the inner circle. How true is that? Uh, well, it's, it's pretty true, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to make local friends, mm -hmm. I have a hack for you. Okay. Basically, while Swedes are not the biggest fans of small talk, they do love activities like sports, yoga, climbing, you name it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're pretty adventurous. Okay, so I should take a Swede on one of these to bond? Yes. And I personally agree with what Carl just said because I had a group of Swedish girls in my class and we actually bonded by having a trip together. We went to a few gym classes and our relationship went from what are we having for lunch today at the canteen to a very rewarding relationship, so a friendship. Yep. And in general, Chalmers uh, help you connect with people since the first day you arrive. Uh, there is a group called Cirque that organizes events with people, so they put you in a group when you arrive, you do with them orientation around campus, and these people will end up being your friends. This is what happened in my case, and we became kind of a codependent friend group. <laughs> but it's great, so don't worry about making friends here, I'd say. Oh, this one's a good one. The cold weather. I mean, I think also there's some sort of exaggeration. It's not like minus 20 degrees in Gothenburg. No. Yeah, but it's pretty windy and rainy. It's windy and rainy. Yeah, so I have two words for you. Thermal wear. Uh, <laughs> so I would say the key to handling this weather is correct layering. I would, of course, invest in a rain jacket, in rain boots, scarf, um, gloves, what else? Hat. And maybe loose pants to fit thermals underneath. Uh, yeah. But uh, is it cold inside as well? Uh, well, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, even though it could be freezing outside, the houses and classes are very well insulated and heated. Uh, so, while it might be stormy outside, you'll be in shorts inside. Not on campus. <laughs> Not on campus, sure. <laughs> okay. Also, 
With the cold weather comes the perfect opportunity for sauna bathing, mm. something you'll find is quite common in the Swedish winter. I especially like saunas close to a lake or sea, where you can cool down in freezing water and warm up in cozy warm saunas. Yeah, that's crazy for sure. <laughs> <laughs> So I think you're okay, <laughs> but personally, I think it's indeed a very difficult thing to leave your support system and move to a completely new country. And at the beginning, you don't have as many friends. But I think also that because of technology, it's kind of easier. So maybe in our parents' generation, that was horrible. You can send a letter or whatever, or a phone call every once in a while. But for us, we can call on a daily basis. Something that I would recommend is making dates with your family and friends so maybe choosing one day a week oh we're gonna have dinner together this week right. or with your friends you can have a zoom call you can have a zoom party like covid days and you can yeah. make it work of course it's still hard i understand that and also you can talk to someone so in chalmers we have a student center that you can go to and you can talk to in case you have any bad feelings and they would help you with that uh, but i have to say though that my favorite part about doing exchange abroad is that you come here with one family and you leave with so many little families all around the world and that is a really nice thing. Uh, another aspect of homesickness could be about religious practice and in Chalmers we have designated prayer areas for students so I think you're good for that. Yeah. And one more thing that people were worried about of course is the food. No one, I mean we have, at least I come from a very rich food culture, so Lebanese sure, culture is sure. rich. And I have found some products here that I can't find in Lebanon anymore. And there are also, in Gothenburg, since it's very multicultural, there are so many restaurants that are very good. I've never, I don't think I've ever had a bad dish in <laughs> Gothenburg yet, okay? <laughs> and other than vegetables or fruits, in some seasons you will find everything. Even in regular supermarkets, although there are also big supermarkets that have oriental food or more exotic stuff. Well, Shamish scores quite high in the world in employability and the majority of Chalmers students have relevant jobs only six months after graduation. On top of that, the university offers many opportunities to meet employers through, for example, job fairs like Charm, mm -hmm. where companies from all over Europe come to Chalmers to speak to students. And also, we have guest lectures in almost every class mm -hmm. where people from the industry come to talk about what they're doing. Yeah, and it's a great way to get in direct contact with people who otherwise you wouldn't see. Like, that wouldn't be the first contact person. Like, right. And if you want to get more information, we have a blog post about this specifically on the Chalmers website, where you can also get to know some of Chalmers alumni in different fields. And on this note, we end this video. We hope we managed to answer some of your questions and ease your doubts a bit. And we hope to see you in another video. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>